Well, the main challenge was uh, the name itself. So when uh, University of Liberal Arts uh, Bangladesh started back in 2004, it was a new concept. And our board of trustees, so they all went to Brown in the States and they brought in this liberal arts concept to Bangladesh. But people tend to confuse it with fine arts. So, the, you know, so when you have a program with uh, engineering, so business school, you know, humanities and media and journalism. So they were saying that, are you doing performing arts? So eventually we had to like, and we did, did, did a survey and we decided to go for the acronym rather than expanding the title. You know, so instead of calling University of Liberal Arts Bangladesh, we started calling ourselves just ULAB. That way, like, you know, so we could promote the idea of liberal arts once we start getting the students rather than, you know, misleading them by our signboards. So that has been quite a challenge. But uh, our students, once they start going into the job market with this 360 degree knowledge and a combination of skills that they acquired through their exposure to different extracurricular activities. So we have a blended learning and the interdisciplinary approach and all that. So our students actually perform better in the job market. And once they start doing that, so others are taking note of it. So the other universities, so they're also incorporating liberal arts as its foundational or guiding principle. But I would not say the government is actually warming up to the idea because it has this traditional rigid structure and it's not encouraging liberal arts as its core principle. Even though like, you know, so students voluntarily would take part in different soft skills program, like, you know, they would organize things on their own but the support at an institutional level is not there, at least from the government side. So liberal arts, what we do at ULAB, so we have sustainable development, uh, informed citizenship or en engaged citizenship, critical thinking, research. So these are the core values that, you know, so comprise of our liberal arts uh, philosophy. And we do blended learning and opening up the program through like in a different uh, gen ed, general education program. So, th you know, each student is required to have 30 credit hours of general education so that they have a comprehensive knowledge. So it has to be a combination of knowledge and skills, but it, at the same time, they need to learn, they need to have the passion for lifelong learning so that they carry on learning even after their graduation and they become engaged citizen for the betterment of their institution for the nation and the world at large. There's a huge demand for higher education, that's for sure, because uh, the number right now, if I'm not wrong, around 4.7 million like you know, who are stu uh, enrolled in the universities, but that is projected to increase uh, significantly, if not exponentially. And because of that, so this is also, the, you know, so we right now have about 150 universities. So of which 50 are in the public domain and the 100 about like in the uh, private sector. So there has to have some public private partnership. You know, so if you just think that, you know, we are on our own, like, you know, so, and everybody is saying that, you know, so we are going to come up with the best uh, curriculum, we're going to bring in the best faculty, that's not happening. And the reason it's happening so fast, so we don't have the logistics to cope up, uh, cope up with the, you know, so the onrush of students. And the other factor that has contributed to this uh, growth, that we have to thin out our uh, services as well as the qualities as well. Uh, the way it works, for example, the pri primary system and the secondary system has not grown, you know, so in relation to the higher education. So we don't have the foundation, you know, for people to come into the tertiary system. So in, in the process, what happens, we have to compromise. So some of our curriculum to make room for some foundation courses or pre-university courses within our regular curriculum. And that is compromising the quality of education. 
So what the government is doing, so with all these uh, projects and all that, so the accreditation, the quality assurance and all that, so they're trying to ensure a monitoring system. But then again, so there are issues like political involvement, you know, so because you have the regional politics, so uh, all the degree giving colleges are suddenly transformed into universities. That's the, you know, shortcut that the government is taking because there's this demand. So you have already established a college, so you just rename it, rebrand it, you know, and some of, uh, sometimes, so these are cosmetic. So these transformations are cosmetics. On the other hand, so the private system is much more smarter because, you know, so they're dealing with a client base and they have to offer service. And if you don't, they, if they don't serve, what will happen? So they will lose out on this huge client base. Now there is this, you know, uh, attitude towards this uh, new paradigm that, you know, the public system does not think of its students as its client base, as opposed to the private ones dealing with the students as a clientele. And this actually creates tension among the public and, you know, private teachers. So all this international monitoring is actually helping us to shape up in the process. And we are aware of the demographic dividend that, that we have this age group, like, you know, so ready for the higher education. So we don't, if we don't give them the right amount of education, so they're going to lose out. And they need to be both local and global actors at the same time. And because our industry is also developing, so there are new industries coming, you know, to Bangladesh. So it's not only government anymore. So there are IT sectors, the maritime sector. So there are new sectors in which you need a new kind of uh, workforce. And for that, so the new universities are more tailored towards the needs of the market. So the industry is actually, you know, defining higher education. So we have this supply and demand uh, dichotomy at work and in place, and that is actually helping us to shape up. Mm -hmm.